Yo, what is going on guys? Flashverse here and welcome back to another video on Superman and Lois. And um, this will be my review and breakdown for Superman and Lois Season 1 Episode 2 titled Heritage. And when you watch this episode, you do know why it's called Heritage. Um, spoiler alert, in case you guys haven't seen this episode, you have been warned because this is a breakdown after all. So I'll be breaking down the episode bit by bit as I give you guys my overall thoughts on it. And wow, that ending. So you guys certainly wouldn't want to hear that spoiler from me. So go watch it for yourself and then come back later. And obviously you could, then you guys could see the breakdown. But before I go over anything, however, you guys don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way. Okay, so this episode starts off with the family basically moving to Smallville and basically Lois Lane is narrating the scene and she's talking about this new change that it brings from moving from Metropolis which you've grown up in and like you've worked your whole life in and like you move that life and go to Smallville which was quite cool to see. Um, it was pretty emotional for Lois as well because obviously she had to leave everything behind and the kids as well like Jonathan had football practice and he had to leave everything behind just for like you know the sake of his brother as well as the secret which Clark has and obviously Clark and Lois just think it's better to just move to Smallville rather than just staying at Metropolis and we then basically get this montage of the family moving stuff around and they're basically adjusting to this new change which it brings from moving from Metropolis to Smallville. Now we then have family dinner and let's just say this goes chaotic. So Clark firstly starts off by saying that Jordan is not allowed to go to school as Clark wants to make sure that Jordan is in full control of his abilities first before he actually does something because he doesn't know that Jordan is in control yet. He doesn't know that he doesn't want to take the risk of him blasting off again. And Jordan is not too happy by this because one of the main reasons for the family moving to Smallville in the first place was for the benefit of Jordan. And because Jordan isn't allowed to go to school, he is not happy by this. In fact, he's angry and he calls himself more of a freak than he was before since he has those Kryptonian abilities and also adding on to his mental health issues as well. So he isn't too happy about that. But then we head over to Captain Luthor and he's basically suited up in his Lexo suit and he is in this location called Moldova and we find out that he is searching for more supply of kryptonite because from last episode we obviously found out that he ran out of kryptonite so he's on the hunt for more and he basically infiltrates this military base as he's looking for more kryptonite but he is out of luck he does not find kryptonite in that area which doesn't lead him too happy he heads back to his ship and he's basically really triggered about this he we see him like you know punching the wall so yeah, he's pretty angry, but then he tells his AI that he wants to stop Superman from doing what he did to his world. And obviously we do see what happens during the ending scene, but I am very interested to see more of this backstory with Captain Luther and the Superman of his world. I thought that was a very interesting scene towards the end and obviously I will get to that later. And we do understand more of Captain Luther's motivations because of that, because he is afraid that this Superman of this Earth could potentially end up being the Superman that happened from his world. So he is in fear of that. Now we then have Jonathan heading to the first day of school with Lois, while Clark takes Jonathan to the Fortress of Solitude for some training and like, you know, a history lesson, if you will. So we have Clark and Jordan basically flying off and we do have the slight jealousy with Jonathan, if you want to say. Like, he does say, oh, how does he get to fly? But we are in a car ride. And then I really like what Lois said when she's like, oh, at least you have the radio with me. I really, really like that. So we have Jonathan at school and he meets with Sarah Cushing, who basically assists her around and basically tells Jonathan where to go. And Sarah was wondering why Jordan wasn't in school, in which Jonathan obviously had to cover up by saying he was sick. Now Sarah's boyfriend and his friends just come along and obviously give Jonathan a hard time. So in regards to Jonathan spending time in school, he isn't doing too great. But meanwhile that is happening, we have Jordan and Clark at the Fortress of Solitude. And we basically have them two basically exploring the area. And Clark was giving Jordan this brief backstory where he's like, 
when his father died, he didn't really know who he was, and he came to the Fortress of Solitude to find out. And basically, Jordan learns more about this Kryptonian heritage that he didn't know before. As basically, Clark inserts that crystal that came from his ship from last episode, and then basically we get this hologram of what happened to Krypton, which I thought was pretty cool to see. And we then have Jordan meeting Jor-El for the first time, and we do see Jor-El for the first time as well. And he does mention that how there could be more Kryptonians, starting with Jordan, which does obviously keep his hopes up, and he is very happy about this. Now we do then have Lois Lane in this cafe, and she researches more about Morgan Edge, because she wants to like expose him for who he really is. And then... Lois encounters Lana Lang as well as Kyle Cushing who are also in that cafe and basically Lana invites Lois to this barbecue that they're going to have and the mayor is also in that same cafe as well and he mentions to Kyle that there will be some council meeting and then Lois is basically interested in this and we will obviously see that play out during the episode. But we do then have Clark and Jordan heading back to the Kent farm after they left the Fortress of Solitude. And basically Clark explains to Lois how the Fortress of Solitude journey was basically interesting. And how he's going to take Jordan for the next day in order to test if he is actually capable of doing the things which Superman can do as well. But obviously Clark is then able to hear General Samuel Lane arriving in which Lois takes the kids and heads to her area and I'll get to that later on. But Samuel Lane then arrives and he basically tells Clark about this stranger infiltrating this military base with his ship. So Clark does know that he's arrived to this place with whatever ship he has. And we do have Lois Lane heading over to the council meeting and she basically confronts this news girl in Smallville who was, who was stalking her in the cafe as well. But Lois also listens to the meeting with Morgan Edge and she basically criticizes him about providing these jobs with very, very low wages. But whatever Lois does and whatever argument she brings, Morgan Edge is actually able to find a counter argument for that, which does show like, you know, how incredibly intelligent and corrupt this guy is, which I really liked. And obviously he is the main villain for Lois Lane, which I cannot wait to see how this plays out. But we do see that whoever was in that council meeting were all in favor of Morgan Edge. So yeah, this guy is pretty damn manipulative. But we then have Samuel Lane and Clark Kent talking. And Samuel Lane basically tells Clark how this simple life is gone. Clark will never get the simple life, so there was no point of them moving to Smallville in the first place and basically how this move had to make Lois and Jonathan adjust to these changes because they had a life in Metropolis which they left behind and Samuel Lane does also mention that it would be hard for Jordan to adjust in Smallville as well and Clark basically tells him that isn't the reason that they moved to Smallville in which Sam is able to put the pieces together and he finds out that he told the kids that Clark is Superman and he is not happy with this at all. Clark thinks that this is going to bring the family back together, but Samuel Lane doesn't agree with that. He thinks that it will tear the family apart. Now we then have the stranger infiltrating another military base and we basically have Clark being able to hear that. So he arrives at the scene and we do have the stranger confronting Superman as he says, you destroyed my whole planet. And then we get this awesome fighting between the stranger and superman and um, this time however unlike last episode superman mops the floor with captain luther he does end up winning but captain luther does have a backup plan he has a bomb strapped on his ship and basically clark has to choose which one to go after to either stop captain luther once and for all or basically save the citizens who are in threat of this bomb exploding and um, this obviously leads to clark choosing to save the people so he flies to the ship and flies the bomb out of space and away from danger in which it explodes and this leads to Clark basically crash landing on earth and we do then head to school where we have Jonathan's football practice um, let's just say the bullies are giving him a very very hard time and he doesn't make it in the playbook so yeah that doesn't go too great and he is not very happy about this because like the bullies were like you know tackling him on purpose and stuff like that 
I'm not too good with my knowledge on American football. In fact, I, in fact, I know nothing about it at all. So I don't really know what the rules are or anything. But by the looks of it, it does seem like they cheated. Now Clark then tells Lois about the stranger and you know how this threat just had to come at the perfect time when Clark just promised his kids that he would be a better father and he would be there for them more often but this stranger is basically preventing that from happening and obviously Clark doesn't know that this is Captain Luther or a Lex Luther in general because for them John Cryer is still the Lex Luther so they have no idea about this multiverse version of Lex Luther appearing so I'm very interested to see how that storyline plays out but we also have Lois telling Clark about Morgan Edge and Clark does also you know take a look at Lois's article which she is writing and one thing I really really like was when Clark is like you realize Morgan Edge owns the Daily Planner right so obviously this would mean that there's no way Morgan Edge would let this letter be posted and I really like this line with Lois where she says okay you do your Superman stuff I do my Lois Lane stuff I thought that was great now we have Jonathan getting angry that he didn't make it onto the team or something again I do not know my rules of American football so I'm not entirely sure but Jordan doesn't know that he didn't make it. So he keeps like, you know, adding these things onto his brother. He's like, oh, imagine if I can fly because Jordan didn't get tested yet. So Jonathan just rushes upstairs. He isn't very happy about this. And Lois mentions how he's a very great brother despite, you know, hard things happening. And this was due to him agreeing to move to Smallville just for the sake of his brother and him leaving everything behind which I thought was pretty good as well. But we then head back to the Fortress of Solitude where we now have Jor-El and Clark basically testing Jordan to see if he has that, you know, Kryptonian power, if you will. But surprisingly, Jordan's testing failed as he doesn't have, like, you know, enough reaction with the sun, I guess. Like, he isn't like Superman. His body doesn't react in the same way as Superman as he is half Kryptonian after all he isn't full Kryptonian and Jordan basically gets upset by this because he overhears this conversation between Jor-El and Clark as Jor-El does says he will never be one of us so obviously Jordan wouldn't be too happy about this now I do have a theory in regards to this whole Superboy setup thing and I will get to that later on as it does play a part towards the end of the episode but we obviously have Jordan angry with the fact that He's just a freak. He doesn't have these powers. And also adding on to him being powerless as well. This just stresses him out even more. And Jonathan is even more upset with the fact that he didn't make it into the team. And he's just yelling at Jordan saying this isn't all about you. So we do have this quick family argument until they have to get ready to head over to Lana Lang's barbecue. Now over at the barbecue we do have more of this conflict between Kyle Cushing and Lois Lane against the Morgan Edge where we have Kyle actually supporting the low wages which Morgan Edge is providing to Smallville which is very interesting and obviously Lois doesn't agree with that she will try and get to the bottom of it until he's fully exposed and I cannot wait to see how that storyline progresses but we have Clark hearing the stranger entering the military base in Metropolis I guess so he heads to that location now we have the stranger easily just blasting through the military and he's looking for kryptonite once again. Now we then have him entering the main base of the military and he basically talks to Samuel Lane and he gives this necklace to him and he tells him not to call him Superman. And for me while I was watching this at the start it seemed like they knew each other from somewhere. So I'm like oh are they close from Captain Luther's world? That's what I thought and obviously that does lead to the ending scene which I will get to later on. But we obviously then have Superman defeating Captain Luther and as he heads over to take off the mask we find out that it isn't Captain Luther, it's just his suit in general and Captain Luther was just watching behind him which was very very interesting and um, also Captain Luther now wants to build another suit because his suit is destroyed, kal literally just destroyed it. But we then get this great scene between Jonathan and Jordan Kent where basically they're both on good terms and Jordan apologizes for Jonathan about all of that and the brothers are basically back together. Now this is where the Superboy setup comes in. Jonathan says that he will help 
train his brother Jordan. Now we do know that these brothers are half Kryptonian. So what if these two brothers are together, then they unlock their Superboy powers because half and half obviously makes a whole. So if these brothers are together and they're fighting together and if they stick together, would that bring that Kryptonian energy up if you will and basically set them up as Superboy like that? That is my theory in regards to it, but I'm not entirely sure. But we then have Clark giving Jordan the Superman phone or the beeper, whatever you want to call it. So if there is any trouble, he will be there as Superman for Jordan, if not dad as well. So Jordan is allowed to go to school once again. And maybe we will see Jordan using this more along the lines of him calling his father and not just Superman. Now we then have this scene with Lois Lane being badass which I really really liked where she marches into the Daily Planet and she basically confronts Morgan Edge for changing her newspaper article in which she hands over this paper and she's just like I quit which was pretty cool to see and we then have Lois Lane going into the Smallville Gazette and she gets employed over there so she is able to post that anti-Morgan Edge article and as I said, this storyline is very, very interesting and I cannot wait to see where this goes. But arguably the biggest WTF moment was the Captain Luther flashbacks where we have Superman of Captain Luther's Earth killing the whole army. And then the Samuel Lane of his Earth basically is able to sacrifice himself in order to save Lex or Captain Luther. Um, basically evil Superman like that was pretty cool to see he did also have the same suit that he had during Elseworlds and I do have a theory video coming in regards to this evil Superman but this was a pretty cool reveal to see and I cannot wait to see how this goes on and I am very interested to see if like you know this earth that basically evil Superman is and Captain Luther is is it that the bad guys of this earth are basically the good guys and then the good guys are the bad guys that's what I think is going on and I will get to more in detail with my theory video coming pretty soon so stay tuned for that but overall I thought this was better than episode 1 I really really liked it obviously this was much more action packed than episode 1 as well which obviously is a great thing as well but the storylines as well is just so great. I absolutely love this show. But yeah guys, thanks for watching. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please give a like and subscribe. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought about this episode. And yeah, I will see you guys in my next video.